I am Dr. Tasha Browning, a trauma therapist, and this is The Trauma Perspective. In this podcast, we will discuss various topics surrounding mental health, trauma work, trauma healing, and explore the lived experiences of trauma survivors. Be warned, trauma is a dirty topic. It is thick with hurt and it reveals some of the ugliest sides of human existence. These discussions may not be appropriate for all listeners. So take a breath, stay present, and let's discuss the trauma perspective. Welcome to episode one of the trauma perspective. If you have somehow found yourself here at this moment in this time to join me for this talk, it's probably because this is something that you need to hear. I rarely find that when we are in the midst of our daily goings, life and choices and decisions and we seek out different topics or different topics pop up into our existence or in front of our face. It's rarely because these are things that we necessarily need to ignore. It's probably because it's something that it's time you paid attention to and took some action on. And some of that usually is the work that we have to do with our life. And in this work, we can sometimes uncover that we have dealt with trauma, that we've gone through things in life, and we need and both deserve healing in that issue. So the first topic of this podcast, rightfully so, should probably be what is trauma? Because we need to kind of understand what this phenomena is. And there's no a more appropriate place to start than to come to a clear understanding of exactly what trauma is, how it fits into mental health, how it's different from mental health, but also what it looks like to um, be healed from trauma and what exactly is the work that I do as a trauma therapist. I get asked this question a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm always amazed at how people are perplexed when hearing the word trauma you know, when they they don't necessarily understand um, what when I say trauma or if I say trauma therapist, what I'm describing. And so I've learned over the years that um, when we're trying to define trauma or we say what is trauma, um, I think what people are really looking for in that question is validation that what they've experienced has actually been trauma. So they're looking to know that, you know, the way that they see trauma, feel trauma, smell trauma, have experienced trauma was actually trauma. Because I think sometimes people are so used to going through things or having challenges in their life and being told that they need to overcome it, that they should be stronger and push through it and that they should, um, you know, get over it, that we forget that people may have an expectation that what they've experienced may not be important or valid when it actually is. So in not understanding what this word trauma is um, or asking questions about what trauma is, I think it just provides a little bit of um, support for themselves as they start to think about their own personal experiences with trauma. I also think that trauma definitely is a part of the human existence and continues to be very present in our lives. And even as we involve in humans, there's not a day that that goes by that we don't have some instance of uh, trauma or tragedy or or, um, hurt and pain, you know, Um, that kind of... um, experience is a lived experience in our life. And as human beings, there's no way to bypass having traumatic experiences in life, unfortunately, because 
we don't always have control over the things that happen to us, even though we may like to or think that we do. There are just things that sometimes happen. So for the sake of clarity, maybe we can sort of come to a general definition or I just like to say an understanding because truly I think you know the way we define things is such on an individual and personal level I just think it's better that we have a general understandings about things and then just apply those understandings to um, who we are as human beings so a general understanding of trauma and this is my understanding of trauma in the way that I classify it when I'm working with um, patients um, and people is that trauma is anything and everything that shakes your soul. Trauma is anything and everything that shakes your soul and makes you question your truth and your safety and even question your own body. If you've experienced violence, if you've experienced a car accident, chronic disease, child abuse, domestic violence, war or been a part of a war, terrorism, bullying, emotional abuse, all of that, in any of that, then you've experienced trauma and you've lived through a traumatic event and you now have a lived experience of a traumatic event. But let's not also forget that trauma can be experienced in a secondary way. And I think that this is the version of trauma that maybe um, when people are asking me what is trauma and looking for validation of their trauma, I kind of feel like that this is maybe the area that we sometimes neglect and we we forget about when we're looking at people who are suffering and who've lived through trauma and experienced it. We forget that people also experience trauma in a secondary way. And a lot of people who experience trauma work in the healthcare field, they're policemen, they're firefighters, they work in many kinds of public service, they've been in the military. All these people have either experienced have witnessed trauma and because of that they've experienced a trauma second hand um experiencing your trauma second hand means that you were not a part of the primary event you were not a part of the primary trauma but you maybe in the work that you do or maybe in the way that you saw it on tv or maybe in the way that you witnessed a tragic event such as 9-11 or George Floyd you now have experienced secondary trauma and we all experience secondary trauma in some form or fashion but the Actual experiences of secondary trauma can sometimes manifest in some of the same symptoms and the same issues that people who have suffered the primary event have. There really is not a major difference in the symptoms that people um, deal with when they've experienced trauma because everybody's uh, way in which we cope with trauma and we cope with uh, these events is going to be similar. Um, they're really in trauma work. We like to say, you know, there really is no level of trauma in terms of this person has experienced it. And so it's impacting them more. And this person exper has experienced less trauma. So, you know, what they're feeling is not really as impactful. I mean, really, that really plays no part in healing and people uh, needing to release uh, these imprints of trauma in their body um we should never try and step into someone else's shoes and tell them how they're feeling or how their experience has affected their life and so when we look at the differences between dealing with an actual primary trauma experienced or being someone who constantly deals with secondary trauma, um, we just accept that trauma is trauma. We accept that whether it was lived firsthand or whether it was lived through witnessing and then maybe it, helping, if you're into helping professions, you're, you're, you're living it through witnessing, but you're also living it through the after effects of maybe helping someone with the trauma. It's life altering. It's soul changing. It's something that you may still need to cope with. It's definitely something that you need to heal from. It is something that deserves recognition. I think it is because of these understandings of primary traumas, 
secondary traumas, and people's experiences, and how they so deeply impact and affect people that I decided to become a trauma therapist and be someone who can help be a bridge between the present moment and where they're moving into the future. I definitely don't work to anchor them in the past. Their past is their own. I meet people where they are here in the present. And I think that those understandings of trauma kind of started with a client I had very early in my career. So story time, right? Because, you know, TikTok, Instagram, everybody, we do story time now. So here's my story time. Um, I was a few years out of college and I was working um, in community-based programs. I had an opportunity to begin my journey into brain injuries and spinal cord injuries, which I am very blessed for those experiences because that is pretty much where the foundation of my actual trauma work started. It started in understanding physical traumas in the physical body. And then it moved into understanding how that definitely affects the mental body and the spiritual body later on in my career and how all of those things are connected and all of those things must be accessed and must be um, recognized when doing trauma work. So I was, you know, very much fresh, you know, into the world and I had, you know, all of the characteristics of someone who wants to go into the helping professions, you know, um, big hearted, somewhat naive, wanting to do good, still not really knowing all of my job, but being there also to learn and observe and wanting to really get out there and get my hands dirty and do good in the world. So I was uh, assigned this woman who um, suffered a brain injury after being beaten and left in her home Um, when she was in a relationship and the relationship ended, she ended the relationship with the individual and the individual in turn was not, um, for that and decided to beat her in her home and leave her on the floor and actually beat her dog too. So that's like, I was like, literally I'm trained for humans now. I got, there's trauma with the dog too. Like, okay, take notes, figure out deal with trauma with human and dog. So, um, yes. So she, um, survived and she was in her home for a number of days unconscious along with her dog. Um, and she was finally found by a neighbor and taken to the hospital and, and she survived. And so here I am coming in, um, you know, afterwards, uh, in a community reintegration program, um, bringing people home after a trauma, um, after it, it, in this particular situation, a brain trauma. And I'm there to help you reintegrate your life into the now after with all your new disabilities and with all your new, um, with your new body that doesn't function the way that you want it to with your uh, new emotional state that definitely is, doesn't feel safe and um, doesn't um, deal with reality and is not oriented in the same way that you would expect anyone who just um, suffered a brain injury, number one, but two is now has this emotional injury and mental injury. And I enter her home and there's this wonderful, alive woman in front of me And there's this dog that's walking around and now very protective. So he's barking and he's very scared and he has a lot of anxiety. And I just remember thinking this dog, regardless of who I am and what I do, he will never, he will always protect her. And I'm only going to be able to get as close to her as he will allow. 
So the first person I needed to, or the first individual <laughs> that I needed to um, gain trust in order for her to trust me is going to be this puppy. And I remember wanting to sit down, but instantly knowing that I needed permission. And just because I believe that I'm safe doesn't believe doesn't mean that they believe that I'm safe. And so I entered into her house, into the ways in which I thought you were supposed to enter someone's house. And I immediately switched it up and started to enter her house in whatever way she was going to be comfortable in letting me in there. Even though I was a representative of the organization that was going to help provide support for her and bring in people for, you know, therapies and, and for modifications to the home and for different treatments. I am still someone that is unknown and to her and to this dog, I am still not safe yet. So in that meeting, I set where the puppy placed me and he placed me in a chair far, far away from his mom. And I respected that. And I begin my series of questions and I also begin my series of listening and observing. And I found that my questions were not as sufficient as I needed them to be. These questions were not going to help me get to know this woman. And these questions were supposedly designed to help me get to know her and they were doing nothing. And so I sat there in that moment and I reached down and I opened my hand. And when I opened my hand, the dog came over and sniffed me and I didn't touch him. And he walked back to his mom and I sat there and I continued listening to her and I continued really trying to just connect with her on more than a physical plane. I really, in that moment, started to try to open myself up in a way that at that time I didn't even know was a part of trauma work to really help her feel or help the dog start to feel that they don't have to accept me. I'm asking for permission in whatever way that they are comfortable during their time to start working with me. I was there for four hours. And at the end of that four hours, I finally was able to get the dog to stop barking at me. And I was okay with that. He sniffed me a couple more times and I was okay with that. I stopped asking questions and she started telling me more. I listened to my patient. I empathized with her. I opened myself up to knowing her. And I started to see this wonderfully strong, afraid, but very present woman in front of me who really wanted to put her life back together the way that she wanted it. She recognized that it may never be the same again because the past is the past. But she wanted control back over her body and she wanted a sense of safety back in her home. Some of the injuries that she had that were limit limitations were her hands and her brain injury, of course, but her hands were the most prominent if you were to look at her and they were also causing her the most difficulty because her hands and her wrists were now deformed because when she fell, that was what got the primary injury. So negotiating all the basic things that you would do for yourself are now a challenge. Driving, picking up a cup, you know, feeding your dog, feeding yourself, all these things. And so in respecting what she wanted to do with her life, I had to 
understand that there's no fixing trauma. There was a realization in that moment as a very young person in the helping professions that these things don't get fixed, but they can be healed. We can't go back in the past and make changes, but we can heal here in the future. And I'm just lucky and privileged and honored to have been the person to be with her in this process. She eventually was able to pick up a cup, make her dinner. She adapted herself to her new situation. So of course her hands are never as mobile as they used to be. She wasn't able to go back to her profession, which involved the use of her hands a lot. She was able to even start driving again many years later after her injury. But what she was able to do is reclaim her body, reclaim parts of her mind, and reestablish that sense of safety in her home and own her life. And there is nothing more beautiful than watching someone reconnect themselves to that ownership that we have in our life. I don't think I will ever forget her because she taught me what growth looks like. And she was my first experience in what trauma healing can look like. How someone can really find those new areas of their life and make meaning of them. So at the end of that and getting to watch all of this, this progress, I also understand too, and you should understand that when you're thinking about what trauma is, it's everything. It's all things and it's nothing. But mostly trauma is whatever you define it to be in how it impacts your life. If you were bullied as a child, that's trauma. If you're going through workplace bullying right now, which I've had plenty clients, plenty patients go through workplace bullying, that's trauma. Anytime you feel like your soul has been uprooted, anytime you feel like you have witnessed something that has forever left an imprint on you, that is trauma. And what we do with trauma is we recognize it for ourselves. We define it for ourselves. The only meaning that matters is the one that we create for ourselves. And we understand that we can be healed from trauma. As I move forward in these episodes, it is my hope to have conversations it is my hope to talk to people about their experiences and also talk to professionals about how they're working with individuals who've dealt with these types of traumas and circumstances in their life. I think it's important that we understand that trauma is very hard. It's very dirty. It's not necessarily going to be very sweet, you know, unicorn and butterfly and rainbow conversations. Some of these conversations may be very rough and some of these conversations may even actually trigger thoughts in you. They may trigger memories. They may trigger body sensations. They may trigger smells and feelings. They may bring up things that you feel like are occurring in your mind and your thoughts that you don't even have meaning for and you don't even know where they're coming from. But you know that your body remembers it. You know that your heart remembers it. You may know that it's some type of trauma, even though you haven't been able to label it yet. I hope that maybe in some of these episodes, it encourages you to maybe seek therapy or maybe do your do your own trauma work to heal 
and to find new meanings for yourself in your life. Maybe through some of the talks and some of the work that we do here, it becomes a starting point for you to seek other resources that may benefit you. As with anything, take your time, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, and show yourself a little bit of grace. There's no one as unique as you. There's no one that's going to understand you better than yourself. And I wish you much peace and many blessings. Be well and be balanced. This is Dr. Tasha Browning with the Trauma Perspective.